is a hard one. Depression. Let's talk about it. I have been depressed in the past. I have been severely depressed in the past, clinically depressed in the past. And I remember that there hadn't been one year, and this is like probably for like years and years, there hadn't been one year where I wasn't depressed. Um, and it was always a yo-yo. So I could be depressed for a week, okay for a week, depressed for a month, okay for three months. So it was always a yo-yo. However, in the last two years, um, I would say I've had one memorable episode of depression, which lasted one day. Let me explain. Depression ate away my life. It demobilized me. There were days when I couldn't get out of bed, but I, I knew I had to for the sake of my children, for the survival of my kids, <laughs> to feed them, clothe them, take them to school, etc. And there were days where I felt hopeless in life. I was a robot. There was a time when I was numb. Physically, my left arm would be numb. I can't feel myself. I was so depressed at one point, I passed out. I was so depressed at one point, I could not walk. Originally, I had this walking stick because I did my back in. But the truth of the matter, I ended up using it not because of my back eventually. It was because I just could not stand. I could not stand for long periods of time because I would get lightheaded, dizzy, anxious, anxiety, you name it. I was depressed. I needed to lie down. And so that walking stick kind of helped me mobilize myself. I was to the point where, you know, and remember these were outbursts, so this would happen for a good week and then I'll be okay for a week and, and so forth. So I was in deep, deep depression. Depression. I did not take medication um, for personal reasons. Um, and again, this is a bit of a disclaimer. If you need to take medication, take it. I'm no expert. I'm just letting you guys know what I did to overcome like deep depression. And the reason why I'm telling you all of this is because I know for a fact there are people out there, I know that had these symptoms like I had, the feeling of just numbness, like you're not here, you're not in the present. You're, you're, there were days where I'd wake up and think, how old am I? Who am I? Where am I? Like I would, I wouldn't even know where I was at one point because I was just, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't acknowledge my trauma. And do you know the weird thing is, I didn't know I had depression. I didn't know this was a depressive state because in my mind. I didn't go to the doctors and tell them my symptoms. I would tell them, oh, you know, I can't feel my left arm anymore. Oh, um, sometimes I get dizzy and forgetful. Um, I forget who I am. I forget my name, you know, all these things. And they say, is, is your, are you a bit stressed at the moment? I'm like, yeah, I, I feel a bit stressed, but I wouldn't really tell them the full story. And maybe it's because of the stigma behind it maybe is because I don't want to be labeled as depressed, maybe because I know myself, the joyful me, the exciting me, the, I, oh, I love to try new things and, and meet people and meet people with kindness and, and for me to have this cloud over my head, I, I didn't want to address it, I guess. So at the time, I didn't know I had depression. Just over the years, I kind of started labeling it myself. And then I went to the doctors. Now, like I said, the reason why I have said this is so you know that I know what deep depression is. I've been there. I've done it. However, I have managed to control my depression. And I would say I'm not depressed anymore. There are a couple of episodes. And now I can tell the difference between a very low mood and what is depression, which is um, a part of emotional intelligence. 
And so I'm able to control my life better. Now, this what I'm, these tips I'm about to tell you are from my own personal experience. I'm not a doctor. What works for me may not work for you. But, but this is how I shifted away from depression. Number one spirituality connection with Allah you I, I can't deny I can't take away mental health from the spiritual soul it for me it's impossible they they interlink even in my depressive states the most you know mind-boggling numbness that I had I knew there is a creator and there's a reason for for what I'm going through so I acknowledged that there's a reason and in my heart and in my mind I said to myself I know I'm not a bad person I know I'm kind I know I don't judge people um I take things easy like I know myself I know my character traits so I said to myself this is a blessing from Allah like this is blessing from my Lord the Almighty um so this is my first stage so I would always all these years I would remember nope you know, and do you know what? What I'm going through is going to be an expiation. So even the minor things that I've done in my life is because Allah loves me. Okay. And this is one thing that you have to kind of remember. And if you're not Muslim, whatever faith you um, subscribe to, I think this is a very, very positive mindset to have. End of the day, I have trust and tawakkul in Allah. So those periods where I was awake and I was okay and I was healthy and I was laughing, happy, I would um, I would collect my thoughts and understand this. And I said to myself, okay, when this episode happens again, remember this. So I would kind of tell myself, getting ready for the future. The thing that really helped me is making dua. And for the non-Muslims who are listening to this, is just prayer. So even when I'm lying down, oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, you understand what's in my heart. Oh Allah, Forgive me if I have wronged you and rectify my, my my soul, my my brain, my mental health. So it's even when I'm lying down, I would still rem- remember Allah. So this is tip number one. Do not neglect your Lord. Do not l- neglect the Almighty who has created you and understand that there is going to be an outcome a- after this. Okay, so this is step one. Step two please go to your doctor they will help you and they will assess you and they will give you treatment accordingly go see a professional number three kind of links with seeing a professional is seek counseling or therapy i always say if you don't have access to therapy or counseling please please speak to a friend make an appointment with them say listen friend whoever um, they may be Give me 20 minutes of your time once a week, once every two weeks. Or it could be a family member. It could be a community, a group. And if you don't have no one to speak to, write it down. Journal, express it through poetry, express it through any medium that you feel suits you um, in, in a creative sense. Or any other sense, like even talking to yourself on camera, um, whatever it is. Sometimes just saying it out speaking it out um will help you mentally well help, it helped me anyway i had a notebook um which i will decide to insert a picture or not um where i just wrote everything because i had no one to speak to i didn't speak to anyone but when i did speak to someone um it helped me a lot so i would recommend that right the next tips they're not in particular order i would say the first three tips are quite relevant you know spiritual self you know seeking connection with Allah going to the doctor and seeking therapy and but the rest is not no particular order pampering take care of yourself I know this sounds cheesy and a bit like oh it's another cliche take care of yourself but really take care of yourself and this is what I did again this is from my experience what I would share and which helped me I would put the kids to sleep to bed or as they're older, they'll be upstairs. I'll, I'll stay in my living room, to be honest, and put candles. 
I'll put candles. Um, maybe I'll insert some pictures as well as I'm talking. I put candles. I've got a dehumidifier. Have nice smells in the room. I would actually just relax. Maybe I'll pick up the Quran uh, and pick an A. Sometimes I would just, just to get in a good state of mind, I would just pick a random ayah and just contemplate on that ayah or, or pick a surah, surah, I believe um, it's surah duha, which really helped me. And there was a really, really nice um, explanation of that. So I think it's that surah. But I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to probably insert which one I mean here and um, maybe leave a link down below that really helped me so I would take that time for contemplation L literally just relaxation sometimes I just do nothing I just relax understand myself reflect um, and I would also go to go to the salon once a month I book myself an appointment and just have a nice spa whatever it may be it may be a massage just walks I went for walks I did a lot of walks that's part of self-care walking and this is why you find a lot of nature things in my um in my posts because nature helped me ground myself like I live in the city and when I would go to the woods I would be like oh this is so peaceful <laughs> can I just please build like a, a house on the tree there uh, and live there or make little twigs and just and just go live in in the, in the woods and that's how I felt and I found it very relaxing to be in nature so this is another tip I would give be in nature and appreciate nature and breathe the fresh air in nature another part of self-care is building confidence um this is good for your mental health and sometimes it's difficult to build confidence when you've been so depressed you become nervous and anxious and like okay so this is me when i was really depressed i said to myself i'm going to take a picture and i said to myself you watch in another year another two you're going to look back at this picture and you're going to be a different woman so i would take a picture I would climb, I would do lots lots of walks to keep healthy and I would climb these hills and I would take a picture again and I was so sad, like these are pictures that I've inserted, it, they, they were really sad pictures, I was not happy but I, I had a vision, okay, I had a goal um, and this is probably the next tip is having a goal and vision, right, so I'm depressed what is my goal? What is my vision? Where do I want to see myself and how am I going to get there? So for me, I took a picture to document how I was at that state. I said to myself, I'm going to compare that picture and you're going to see me thrive. And this is talking to myself. I'm going to see me thrive in a couple of years. And alhamdulillah, it happened. Another tip I would, another tip I would say is my favorite is step out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid. And if it's afraid, and, and if you are afraid, that's a good thing. Do something different. If it's walking, that's something different. And it's helping you mentally. If it's starting a hobby. I mean, I remember doing, um, making balms and body balms and making homemade Vaseline. And this was just, it, it kept my mind busy, but I was learning a new skill and I was really enjoying it. So doing something other than your normal routine, your normal thing that you usually do really does help. And again, from my previous videos um, that you'll see of how I keep healthy, one of the things I've tried different sports, again, stepping up my comfort zone and meeting different people. I downloaded this app. It's, I think it's, yeah, it's called Meetup. And I managed to meet different people. And I managed to go to different classes. I've really, really stepped out of my comfort zone. And people who know me, I'm not only, I wasn't only depressed. I was a severe introvert. And I still am an introvert. I like solitude. And I love meeting people and mingling. But I'm a person who, but I'm a person, I would say, who's very, I'm an INFJ, basically. If you don't know what that is, look it up. <laughs> I'm a proper INFJ. So the meetup, you know, I met different people, I met different friends, I, and it was good. It was a good experience. I mean, that kind of built my confidence in meeting people. Another tip I would say is mindset, and this kind of goes in with emotional intelligence, and I've kind of done a video on emotional intelligence, and please, please, please 
do check it out um, if you feel it's going to help you. I said to myself, okay, this is temporary. So you have to put that mindset. You really, really have to think this is temporary. What I am feeling is temporary. It's going to pass. This life is short. I'm going to take every day as it comes and I'm going to um, fulfill my um, obligation to my children, to my rights and to myself. So I started thinking like that and it's helped me a lot. I started asking myself, why do I feel low? And really contemplating on why I feel low. I'll give you an example. For the last two years, thank Allah, alhamdulillah, I haven't been depressed except once and I could feel it coming. And I said to my children, listen, girls, Mummy's going to probably lie down, be a bit emotional. And I don't know why, but this is sudden thing has just come over, over me. And I and I kind of knew why. I think I was a little bit stressed at the time. So I, I knew it was coming. And what I did was quickly, I, um, I made dua. Oh Allah, let this pass quickly, whatever wave this is coming. And I told myself, I know tomorrow is another day. I know tomorrow is a new day. And I know myself, I'm a fighter. I'm not going to let this overcome and take take over. And the next morning, I was fine. <laughs> it was like nothing had happened. All those emotions and those sadness and that, that confusion and hopelessness just disappeared overnight. So that happened, like I said, once in the last two years. And that's since I've been working on myself and working on my mindset. Um, Another tip I would say is doing some sort of voluntary or charity work. And I feel sometimes you're so caught up in your own little trauma of a world when you realize there are people who are probably the same as you, people that are worse off than you. And it kind of like tells you what I told myself. Okay, you felt sorry for yourself. That's good. You had your therapist and she felt sorry for you. Okay, that's good. But now, stop feeling sorry for yourself. There are people worse out there. I really gave myself tough love. So I kind of told myself, okay, that's enough now. You know, it's not the end of the world. Like, chill. (laughs) So I gave myself some tough love. And I think this isn't kind of necessary sometimes, honestly. Uh, Next tip would be educate yourself. Honestly, educate. Like, these are tips I'm giving you and try them out. Please do try them out. Don't just watch this and do nothing. I was proactive. I listened to podcasts. I did watch YouTube videos. Um, I bought books. I bought um, Why Has Nobody Told About This Before? I would highly recommend. So I'm recording from my phone, so it's like opposite. Um, so I would highly recommend this. And also another book that I really love is A Path Through the Jungle, um, which as well really, really helped me. um, And I would highly, highly recommend. You'll be able to understand how your emotions are processed and how to control them and understand them. And what better thing to do than understand yourself, improve yourself, improve your lifestyle for the sake of... Do you know, I always say to myself, my life, my body is an amana, it's a trust from Allah. So I want to try, it's not just physically, but mentally try and look after what Allah has given me. And if I do that, I'm able to look after my kids. And um, inshallah, the ripple effect of positivity will continue there, there on. So those are my tips and I hope it helped. And God willing that whatever you're feeling now is not going to last and I think it takes sometimes for some people it is like an overnight thing they're able to snap out of it but when you're in severely deep depression it may take a while and you may dip in in and out for a while but what you'll do you'll notice is that you'll be dipping in and out less out of depression and inshallah you will have um control over your your life if you enjoyed my content please do like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff let's send positivity around let's help each other um until next time take care of yourself